Welcome to another Pharmaco video. Today, let's talk about diuretics, specifically osmotic diuretics and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Diuretics increase the rate of urine production by several mechanisms. All of the diuretics exert their action on the main structural unit of the kidney known as the nephron. There are roughly one million of these nephrons in each kidney. Classes of diuretics include osmotic diuretics, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, loop diuretics, thiazide and thiazide-like diuretics, potassium-sparing diuretics, and V2 receptor or ADH antagonists. Osmotic diuretics like mannitol do not cross membranes, so they must be given intravenously. Once in circulation, they act osmotically to attract water into the intravascular space. This is useful for pulling excess fluid that has accumulated in the brain or ocular tissues. Osmotic diuretics are freely filtered at the glomerulus, but once inside the renal tubules, they cannot cross membranes and are therefore not reabsorbed back into the blood. While osmotic diuretics are trapped inside the renal tubule, they draw water into the lumen of the nephron, especially in the proximal tubule and descending limb of the loop of Henle. This action acts to increase urine output. Osmotic diuretics include urea, organic acids, and mannitol, the prototype of the group. These drugs are indicated in the treatment of oliguria, which is decreased urine output and to prevent damage to the kidney during the initial stages of acute renal failure. They do this by increasing renal blood flow, abbreviated RBF, coming into the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole. In doing so, they also increase the glomerular filtration rate, abbreviated GFR. Osmotic diuretics are also often indicated to reduce cerebral edema, and elevated intracranial pressure with head injuries, as well as for increased intraocular pressure and in the treatment of drug overdose or toxicity to increase the rate of drug excretion. Commonly used carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are acetazolamide or diamox. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors exert their action mainly in the PCT but also in the DCT. In the PCT, there are sodium hydrogen exchanges in the apical membrane of the renal tubular cells that allow for sodium reabsorption. In the lumen, hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions combine to form carbonic acid, which then is acted upon by an enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase that converts the carbonic acid into carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide is hydrophobic and crosses the apical membrane of renal tubular cells by way of simple diffusion, and water crosses via aquaporin channels. Inside the cell, the carbon dioxide and water are recombined by carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid, which then dissociates into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions build up inside the cell and help drive sodium into the cell, since sodium enters the cell in exchange for hydrogen ions via an antiporter. Sodium and bicarbonate cross the basolateral membrane by way of the sodium bicarbonate symporters and then enter the blood. Treatment with carbonic anhydrase inhibitors decrease the amount of carbon dioxide and water produced in the lumen, and hydrogen and bicarbonate ions produced inside the cell. Hydrogen ions are important for sodium to cross the apical membrane, while bicarbonate ions are important for sodium to cross the basolateral membrane. The end result of treatment with these drugs is less sodium reabsorption in the PCT, so more remains in the filtrate. Water will follow the sodium, hence the diuretic action. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are not particularly potent diuretics, because there are transporters in the more distal parts of the nephron, like the ascending limb of the loop of Henle and DCT, that will reabsorb the sodium. In the DCT, sodium is reabsorbed in exchange for potassium. So excess sodium remaining in the lumen from treatment with a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor leads to more potassium loss. This is because sodium is positively charged 
and as it moves into the cell, it causes the luminal charge to be more negative and draw positively charged potassium into the lumen. This results in more loss of potassium, which could cause hypokalemia. In the lumen of the PCT, bicarbonate ion is not converted to carbon dioxide, so it stays in the lumen and more of it is lost in the urine. Since bicarbonate is a base, its loss in the urine will lead to acidosis of the blood. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors also block the enzyme carbonic anhydrase located in other parts of the body. Clinically, these drugs can also be used to target the enzymes in the eyes, which is important for the treatment of glaucoma. In the eyes, the enzyme carbonic anhydrase is needed to make aqueous humor. So if you block the enzyme with an inhibitor, then aqueous humor production drops and intraocular pressure will therefore also drop. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are also used as adjuncts in treatment of the edema of heart failure to remove excess fluid or for drug-induced edema. Neurons tend to be more excitable when the blood and ECF or extracellular fluid are more alkaline. Since these drugs induce acidosis, they can be used to settle down the nervous system and are used to treat seizures. Acetazolamide is also approved to prevent and treat acute mountain sickness. If taken 48 hours before the ascent to altitude and then again after the ascent, symptoms of oxygen deficiency like cramps, weakness and headaches are improved. Induction of metabolic acidosis by this drug causes the respiratory system to attempt to compensate by increasing respiratory rate which then leads to more rapid altitude acclimation for the climber. This concludes part one. Please continue watching in part two as we discuss loop diuretics, thiazides, potassium sparing diuretics, and ADH antagonists. Thanks for watching.